Hello, this is Mr. Cardoso, and this is video lesson number seven. Um, in this video lesson, we're going to look at the Dr. Java Interactions panel, and all, as well some other variable types while we're at it. So, sometimes we want to experiment with the rules of Java. We want to see uh, what's allowed, what's not allowed, um, what's going to give us a syntax error, what kind of syntax error we're going to get. Um, so, if we want to experiment around, I mean, we can create a class, and create a big long program, you know, with the class, and then open the brace, close brace, public static void main, and all that stuff. But um, that's a lot of work just to test something out. So that's why we really like the Dr. Java um, IDE because it offers this interaction panel. Which um, so what what that allows us to do is we can write short segments of code, and they are executed immediately to see how they will respond. Um, so we're going to look at how that works. Um, we're, while we're doing that, we're going to look at some other integer types. So we've learned about three major types of variable types, int, string, and double. Now we're going to look at some other integer types. So these are all of type integer. So the same rules apply. They're all allowing positive and negative values, but no decimals. So if they're integer types, none of these allow decimals. So we've got byte, short, int, which you're already familiar with, and now long. So we've got three new ones, and these are less than signs. So what they're saying is they're, how they're different is just that the long can store um, much bigger numbers than the int, which can store much bigger numbers than the short, and, and the byte, for example. Okay, um, then you have two different types of reals, real numbers, so that's numbers with decimals. Um, you've already been introduced to the double, that's the one that's typically used, but there is a type of called float, and that just stores um, decimal numbers, but not as precise as double variables can, can. And a new variable altogether is car. Some people say char, but it's short for character, so that's why we say car. And it's used to store a single character with single quotations, as opposed to a string which can store multiple characters and has the double quotations. So some examples of this are the M for, let's say, for example, we wanted to store if you were male or female. Um, so M and F in single quotations, one letter is enough. You can also store other characters such as the asterisk, dollar sign, ampersand, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's experiment all of this within the interactions panel. So you open up Dr. Java, and down here at the very bottom, which we don't pay attention to much, we're going to click on the interactions. So this, when you run your program, it automatically opens up the interactions panel. But we can also use the interactions panel without any code. So notice this is all comments. Um, I haven't actually written any program code in here. So I can write all my program code in here just to experiment. I wouldn't actually write, if I was writing a whole program with a purpose, I wouldn't write my whole program here. Um, first of all, you can't save it, and also um, it's not the proper way. So if you need to write a whole program with a purpose, you would do it how we have been doing it up here, and save it and run it and so on, with your class name and your public static void main and all that. But if you just want to experiment with some code and just see how it reacts, you can use the interaction panel. And oftentimes I play around with the interactions panel just to see how something works while I'm writing my program code. So anyway. Let's uh, take a look at this. So within the interactions panel, if I type some uh, code, so for example, let's say int x, um, it's going to execute it right away. Um, it's I can only write program code in here, or executable lines of code, so the semicolon is optional. I don't actually have to write the semicolon. So I've declared int x, and I press enter. Um, and it's saying, okay, that's fine, no problem. Um, if I want to see what's inside the variable x, I can just press x and press enter. I don't have to do system.out.println x. Okay, and it's telling me that there's a zero inside. That's because I didn't put anything inside the variable x yet. So I can say x equals seven, for example, and now x has seven. Again, if I want to make sure, I can just press x, press enter, and it's showing me that there's a seven inside x. So um, the interactions panel is, is very cool for this kind of thing, just to test out things. Okay, so let's introduce ourselves to these other types of variables. Let's make another variable called uh, of type byte. So again, um, let's call this one y. So byte 
is um, it's like an integer, so it's not allowed to store decimals. Let's try and put a decimal inside byte. Let's say 3.5. It says static error, bad types in assignment from double to byte. So it's trying to put you know a double variable with a decimal into a byte. So bytes, bytes, short, int, and long can only have numbers without decimals. No decimals are allowed there. Um, now, what are the differences? Well, let's see. Let's let's say y equals 110. Oh, that's okay. Let's say y equals 130. Oh, I'm not allowed to do that. It's saying from int to byte. So, 130 is actually too large for a byte. It's too too big to be stored in a byte. So what's the purpose of a byte then if I can just use int for everything? In fact, you'll find that in most cases most programmers will just use int even when they can use byte. But the purpose of the byte is to save memory. Since it can store less um, amounts of, of data, less numbers, it's going to reserve less space in memory, thereby saving memory. So it's a little bit more efficient to use a byte if you don't need to use an int, you can use a byte. So for example, let's say I'm counting the number of hats. So I say byte num of hats. I don't know, I'm just making this up. And I know the number of hats um, is going to be you know, less than 100. And, uh, 100. Um, then I can use a byte because I'm saving memory. Okay. Um, num of hats, the actual limit on a byte is 127. So I can say my number of hats can go up to 127, that's fine. If I now try to say num of hats equals 128, that's too big. That's too big for a byte. So that's the only difference. Am I expecting you to know the limits of these four different types of variables, byte, short, int, and long? No. You don't have to know, but you should know when what's appropriate. If your numbers are going to be large, then you know use an int. If they're going to be really large, then use a long. Okay, so if you know they're going to be really, really big numbers in your program, then use along. And so you just have to know this um, this scale here that the byte is the smallest, short is next, then int, then long. So you can make another variable short um, z equals 500, and that could be stored in a short, that could be stored in an int, and that could be stored in a long. But the short will use the the minimum amount of memory for that. So, just be aware of that. And the other types of, uh, now we've got uh, the floating types of variables. Those are variables that allow you to have decimals. So float and double both allow you to have decimals. And the relationship is very similar. Um, there's only two here. Double allows you to store bigger numbers with, with longer decimal places. And floats allow you to store less. So that's all you need to know there. Car is used to store one letter. So, for example, let's say we wanted to know the gender of the user. So we can call the variable name gender. Then we can say, let's create some more space here. Oops. Then we can say gender equals f. And there you have it. So you can use cars to store single letters. If you try to put that same line of code um, but with more letters, it's going to give you an error. So you can only store one letter or character. So it can be an ampersand, uh, exclamation mark, any kind of symbol that is available on your keyboard, but one character only within single quotations. Okay, no multiple le letters. Okay, so that's what the interactions panel is good for. Just testing things out and we'll use it again in the next video to look at another topic called casting.